All right, hello folks. Today we're going to be doing a quick proof that the normalization condition of our wave function in quantum mechanics does not change with time, okay? And really what we're going to be trying to do here is we have our uh, normalization condition right here, which is the magnitude squared of our wave function integrated over all space is equal to 1, all right? And to put it pretty simply, what we're trying to show here is this guy right here, that when we take the time derivative of this normalization, we end up getting zero. Now, it's pretty easy to see from this that since we have a constant here, just a, a one, if we take a, t a derivative with respect to time of this, we're going to end up getting zero. And that's, that, that's, that's a pretty easy way to go about doing this. Um, but generally speaking, I don't really like proofs, but this proof in particular is one I think is really important to quantum mechanics because if this, uh, if this uh, condition here doesn't hold, we're going to have to renormalize this wave function at a new point in time every single instantaneous uh, change in time. Okay, so if we if we normalize this at zero seconds at zero point zero 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 one seconds, we're going to have to renormalize it again. And so doing this sort of normalization is completely useless then. And so this is a really important concept in quantum mechanics to do. So let's go ahead and begin with this proof. I've broken it up into a few uh, quick and easy steps. Okay. So let's start with what we're trying to prove again, all right? And we're going to start with uh, our t time derivative here of our integrate of the normalization of our wave function. And again, this whole thing equals zero. But one of the things that you'll notice about this entire thing is that we're integrating over all space and we're taking this derivative with respect to time. Okay, because we're taking the derivative with respect to time, we should be able to move this inside of our integrand and change it to a partial derivative and still be able to do this integration. So this right here is actually the same as integrating over all space and in the integrand, taking the partial derivative of the normalization of our normal or of our normalized wave function and that should still equal zero, okay? So let's inspect this integrand now. This is where things are gonna get a little bit interesting. Now we do have a wave function, we do have a, uh, we took the magnitude squared of our wave function, and so what we have here, if you recall from step one, is a partial time derivative of the magnitude squared of our wave function. Okay, and since the, this is a the magnitude squared of this wave function, we can actually break it into uh, the wave function times its complex conjugate. Okay, and so what we're going to end up actually getting here is the partial derivative of our wave function times our complex conjugate of our wave function. Okay, and now this derivative is actually pretty easy to do. We can just do uh, some product rule. And what we're going to end up getting is we're going to get a partial psi, partial t, times psi star, plus partial psi star, partial t, times psi. Okay. And now we have things in terms of a partial derivative of partial time derivative of our wave function and the complex conjugate of our wave function. But the other thing that we need uh, is we need to start to make a substitution here because this is not going to hold up itself. And conveniently, we have something called the Schrodinger equation that is going to directly give us the ability to make a substitution in for these two derivatives right here. So that's going to be step three. So let's recall the Schrodinger equ equation. And it goes as IH bar times partial psi, 
partial t is equal to minus h bar squared divide 2 times our mass times the second partial derivative spatial partial derivative so a partial squared psi partial x squared plus some potential function times our wave function. Now we can really easily just divide this over and lo and behold we're going to end up having a result for uh, the partial time derivative of our wave function. Okay, And when we do that we're going to get partial psi partial t is equal to i h bar divide 2m. This sign changes because we move in this imaginary number around uh, times partial squared psi partial x squared minus i on h bar again just because we're moving around this uh, complex number here uh, times some potential function times our uh, wave function and now we have something that we can substitute back into this guy right here from step two okay Now with this result, we can simply find this uh, partial time derivative of our, the complex conjugate of our wave function by simply just taking the complex conjugate of this guy, which is going to be step number four. All right, And when we take that complex conjugate, it's pretty uh, straightforward that we get partial psi star partial t is equal to minus i h bar divide 2 times our mass times partial squared psi star partial x squared plus i on h bar and times some potential function times the wave function a complex conjugate over wave function and now we have this that we can substitute back in right over here, okay? So now we have everything that we can plug in. In step five, let's plug it all in, okay? So let's just recall uh, what we had here, okay? We had partial, partial t of the magnitude squared of our wave function and we broke that up into uh, two components, just like we did back here. We broke it up into this guy. Okay, and now we're going to make our substitution based off of that. Okay, and so what we're going to what we're going to have is we're going to have this whole thing. So let's erase this. We're going to have a partial partial t of the magnitude squared of our wave function is equal to, let's do our substitution now, i h bar divide 2 m partial squared psi partial x squared minus i on h bar potential function times our wave function and all of this is multiplied by the complex conjugate of our wave function. Okay, and then Again, because we have that product rule, we're going to need to do the complex conjugate, sub, sub in the time partial time derivative of our complex conjugate, okay, which is going to be our wave function times uh, minus i h bar divide 2m partial squared psi partial x squared plus i h bar times some potential function times the complex conjugate and I forgot a complex conjugate over here over there so very good now we can very easily simplify this by pulling out this ih bar on 2m ih bar on 2m okay and when we end up doing that we're going to get the ability to see that this result right here multiplied by our complex conjugate is equivalent to uh, this result right here multiplied by our wave function and these two are going to end up 
pretty easily uh, canceling out. Okay. So those are going to cancel out fairly easily, and when we do when we do simplify this, we're going to be left with i h bar divided two m times the quantity partial squared psi partial x squared psi star plus psi. Oh, that should be a minus. My apologies minus the wave function times partial squared psi star partial x squared and now we have something that we can plug right back into our integrand which is going to be the last and final step because once we plug it back into our integrand we can integrate it okay so uh, what we have here if you recall is we have we're integrating over all space and in the integrand we're taking the partial time derivative of the magnitude squared of our wave function and we've managed to break it up quite well so now we're going to be integrating over all space and we're going to be integrating over what we had before which is that i h bar on 2 m which we can actually pull out of this integral if we really wanted to. Um, partial squared psi, partial x squared, times psi star, minus psi, partial squared, psi star, partial x squared, uh, dx. Okay, and now uh, through our fundamental understanding of calculus, we have some partial derivatives in here, and we're integrating with respect. All right, my apologies, it wouldn't be a typical recording for me if there wasn't going to be some sort of technical difficulty of some kind. But as we, as I was saying, we have uh, two. Uh, partial derivatives in here that are with the same variable right here so we we're integrating over space and this is the second partial derivative of the wave function and the complex conjugate of our wave function with respect to space okay and so integrating these are actually really easy these just become your pretty standard partial derivatives it's no longer a second derivative it's just your standard derivative so what we're going to get is we're going to we're going to let's actually pull out the ih bar on 2m now integrate overall space still actually we're not integrating overall space i'm sorry we're evaluating the integral my apologies and we're going to get a partial psi whoops partial psi partial x Uh, psi star uh, whoops uh, minus psi partial psi star partial x and we're going to evaluate this at minus infinity to infinity okay and now, realistically right now, I know that uh, with these two infinity symbols here, mathematically speaking, we should be evaluating uh, their limits, but I'm not going to be doing that because I'm lazy, I don't like proofs, and I don't like doing extraneous math or writing extraneous things. I, I know exactly what this means. I know I need to treat this as a limit. Um, and if I was doing an actual formal proof, uh, I'd be doing that, but all my proofs are very informal, and I uh, yeah, I'm not doing that for that reason. But one of the things that we need to understand is actually the limits of this wave function. Okay, And we have to recall that for our wave function to be normalizable, or for us to be able to normalize it, we need to make the assumption that our wave function both starts at zero and ends at zero in space. Okay, And so right away, this whole thing is just going to end up zero because right here... Based off of that knowledge, that's going to equal zero. And so is that. And then we just have zero. 
and so therefore we get that the time derivative of normalizing our wave function and so what we get is that the normalization condition of our wave function does not change with time which is exactly what we expected.